Leah, Daniel, Alexis, thanks so much for chatting with me today. Uh, and congr congratulations, because the film's absolutely terrific. I enjoy it so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Sure. Uh, Leah, I'd like to begin with you. Um, you play Ellie. She's our protagonist, a woman with a gift for words. Yes. What strikes me as so interesting about her character is she's somebody who I don't think has ever really given much thought to what it is that she wants out of life. She's sort of always living for everyone around her. So my question to you is, as an actor, you know, you're taught that the first thing you do is always think about what is it this character wants. When you have a character that isn't sure what she wants or it's not clear what she wants, how do you begin to approach and develop that role? Well, even though Ellie isn't sure of what she wants, I can tell you this. Given her background and the way that she functions in this town, in this high school, what she wants is to not be noticed. And it's funny when you see someone who doesn't know what they want, because Ellie just kind of internalizes that in a way that's like, I don't know what I want, so I'm just going to not be a part of anything right now, which you kind of see Ellie do as she navigates through high school life. And I don't want to say invisible, but in a way that is very deliberately apart from everybody else because of the way that people treat her, given her race. Daniel, you play Paul in this. Uh, he's a uh, popular high school football player that's a little socially awkward, who brings Ellie in to help him woo a woman. Um, Paul strikes me as the kind of character that is very much a product of his small town upbringing. And as somebody who is from a small town, I certainly empathize with that. I knew a lot of guys like him. Um, do you think he's actually in love with Aster, or do you think he feels like he needs to be in love with her, or he's supposed to be in love with her because she's just the prettiest girl in school? That's a great question. Um, I also was raised in a small town, so I think I empathize a lot with Paul and, and I understood where he was coming from in a lot of ways. Um, I, I don't, I think it's sort of like a mix between the two, uh, where it, it is this, what he believes is love, um, I mean, she uh, just seeing that she's she is this beautiful woman who who has a gorgeous voice and and who is seemingly very very intelligent as well and all these traits that are very attractive and to be able to um, try to find that is is such is what I think a lot of us search for when we are in high school is just seeing these traits and being like oh maybe maybe that's love for me um, and I think as he goes along he starts to realize really what matters to him personally rather than what like you kind of see as, as a whole. And Alexis, you play the object of affection in this story. Her name is Aster and she's a quite dynamic, interesting woman. Yes. Um, she's somebody that I think sees beyond the small town limitations. She's somebody that actually has aspirations beyond high school. Um, what do you think is the source of that vision for her? You really see her struggle because she is in a comfortable place and she could also still see herself marry Trig and, and, you know, live this comfortable, perfect life. But I think with her being an artist and, and being so inspired by her art and, and by art in general, although at one point, you know, I think she gave it up for a second because, you know, she, life, um, life kind of happens and then you start to get a little discouraged, but I think with her passion with that, it really inspires her to, to, to drive towards it and, and be something more. I think everybody sees her as this one thing and expects her to do all these things, which kind of pushes her the other way to be like, I want more with my life. And Ellie sees that. And I think that's the first time where she's like, yeah, I, 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 could, I, I could actually do this. I could, I could actually be more than this. So. What happens the day after to each of your characters, real quick, without giving away the end of the movie, of course? Leah, I'll start with you. So the day after, Ellie is probably still on a train, hanging out with strangers, <laughs> but I bet you she is running through what happened between blank and blank, which I don't want to. <laughs> no, no, we don't want to give it away here. <laughs> but okay, that makes sense to me, though. I've seen the movie. Um, <laughs> Daniel, what do you think happens to Paul? I think Paul is is missing a certain someone very, very much, uh, thinking of that person, <laughs> but I think also uh, very much in his mind trying to figure out how to make both himself and the people that he loves like proud and, and to, how to move forward with this gift that that the people around him and that Ellie has given him um, in, in finding a future for himself that he really cares about. That's great. Alexis, what happens to Aster? I think what happens to Aster is 
she is missing blank very much as well. Um, but I think she's probably at this point really kind of processing everything. Um, she leaves it where she's, you know, applied to art school and she's finishing up her portfolio pieces. And I'm sure thinking a lot about herself and um, trying to figure everything out. So everybody inspires everybody else. I love that. <laughs> well, thank you all for you being great. Congratulations on the movie. It's terrific. Thank you. Thank you so thank much. Thank you so much. Sure. Have a good one. Have a good one.